Greetings, Kerbinauts! This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode 12 of Project Ares, our real solar system look at an alternate Earth. A timeline that has been modified by the presence of Kerbals. And when we last left our esteemed Kerbinauts of Project Ares, they had lifted off at the top of a Perun super heavy lifter, and I was running down the bug list that I was making as the flight went on. We had already discovered the main engine sounds were not the ones I wanted, the liquid hydrogen was draining too fast and the boosters were burning out after the external tanks were already empty. The cool rocket's effects were not long enough to be as visible as I wanted them. The main engines needed more gimbal response speed to see if that would help with the rocket wiggles. There was no abort action group in case something went wrong, and we still need to add life support. So, now, we'll pick up where we left off last time. I've reached the altitude where I want to level off more, so we're pitching down. Inside our expanded fairing that's about 12 meters wide, we have the Mercury crew vehicle. And you're going to see that it's a very different Mercury from the one Earth created without Kerbal assistance. Von Braun was convicted of war crimes and sentenced to an undisclosed term in an undisclosed prison, but his plans for ships, stations, and ground bases are all still worth consideration. Although combined with Sergei Korolev's ideas and with augmentations by the Kerbals, of course. And in the Kerbal case, it usually just means more power, more efficiency, longer sizes, and more of that long-term view than the just flags and footprints thinking of the humans. We're high enough to release the fairing, and therefore it's time to restore the bug list that I was showing last episode. Boom! There goes a fairing segment. Nothing else was damaged, so we'll continue, but add that to the list, fairing bits that need to ha eject with more force. I noticed around here that my relative inclination to my target was off by several degrees still, and so that's why you're seeing the nose is shifting, pointing a little off-center of the prograde vector to bring us back in line with that target orbit. So while we wait to get lined up and up to speed, let's take a look at the payload in the VAB. Before I expand the VAB, let's just take one more look at this thing here. Holy cow, wow, get out of the way. Just look at the size of that thing in here. I'm amazed at the size of this every time I come in here to take a look at it. That's why I have to use the mod that expands the VAB because it goes up so far. So let's just do that and scroll our way all the way to the top here until we can finally get way up here at the top to take a look inside that fairing and look at the Mercury. I deleted the launcher and moved this down here so that we can get a sense of it still in the regular VAB. And we'll start at the bottom here. Uh, if I take off this fairing bit, you're going to see that I had put in some extra little strut pieces in there in order to make it look like that's what was holding it up. Here, I put it back on. You can see how it looks like they're attached in there, maintaining the structural integrity of that. But that's actually all welded together there. So it is a fairly simple, although I must say fairly pretty, but outside of that, it's a fairly simple launcher. We have ourselves a nice little engine down here on the bottom, a Mercury engine. Isn't that thing gorgeous? It's got cool little pipes all around the outside of it. It even has a little gimbal joint up there. Very nice engine. And then if we scroll out here and take a look, you can see that I've got six tanks around the outside. They are loaded up with three of them being UDMH and three of them being NTO. So between them, I have the, the three and three, six tanks of hypergolic propellant. RCS here on the side, you can see it there, right above the light, cause you gotta have more lights. And yeah, I think I got enough lights on there. I got lights here, 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 all the way up. Yeah, it's probably got enough lights. Nah, blasphemy, I should add more lights. So anyway, we'll look past our engine here. And we see we have it mounted there to another UDMH NTO combo tank. I had to do that because uh, this is all one piece. I wanted it to be two separate ones, but there wasn't anything that was quite shaped like that. 
Then up here we have our living space. And that's where we have these strut pieces on that connect the drop tanks. This whole thing here is a drop tank. We'll be releasing that when we're on our way back from the moon. We have some very nice circular red little pipes down here that are feeding all of the propellant to all of the right locations. And then up here, just past our living space, we have a small tunnel that connects the command center to the living space and surrounding that some tanks that contain the hydrazine for the RCS here. I've got some there and some in there for when uh, these drop off. That's all contained in the external tanks around the outside and all of those are right underneath uh, the command center here, which has our docking port to connect it to wherever we're going, some couplas on the top for improved visibility, the cockpit right up in here, and there's a hatch that will let them go out and do observations in either this enclosed area right here behind the glass, or we can float our way up into here where this is open to space, so if we want to do any experiments by hand where we're exposed to space but with no risk of floating away, we can do that up in here. And then on the very top, we have ourselves a very powerful omnidirectional antenna. Oh, and on the top of that, we got a light. So you've seen the Mercury in the VAB, and now you know what I mean. It is nothing like the Mercury spaceship that you learned about in school. In our alternate history here, there's no reason to rush things. Oops, add that to the list of things to fix. Anyway, no reason to rush things. So we're going to the moon in style. It has living space for six human-sized occupants. It's not long-term living space, but it's certainly enough to last for a two to three week trip to the moon though. I may want to fix how that whole thing is wiggling up and down though. Add that to the list. We don't want to be doing that for three weeks. They could certainly extend their trip to six weeks if they wanted to, I'm sure. It should be enough propellant to make orbit there and return later, and instead of re-entering, it'll stop back at Earth at the Ares space station. That's why it has docking instead of a re-entry capsule. As far as re-entry goes, we'll send an automated launch of an empty re-entry capsule to the station that they can use to get home in. This Mercury craft will stay in orbit around Earth or take trips back to the moon and back to Earth and whatnot for the rest of its lifespan. If we bring it up some additional propellant, then we can refit it with new drop tanks and reuse it for at least 10 to 20 trips. That ought to cover all our exploration needs and then the humans will take over and use it several times for whatever they want to do as well. All right, get ready to add another thing to the list of stuff to fix because I activate the engine, it starts glowing but there's no graphic effect coming out of the bottom. It looks like there's a graphic effect there for the exhaust, but it's up too high in the engine and it's too small. So I'll need to use the smokescreen mod in order to fix that up. The engine still works though, and that gets us into our orbit, which allows me now to figure out what's the maneuver going to be that gets me to the moon. We went into an inclined orbit relative to the moon, so we're sort of on track already. We just need to burn prograde. There's no inclination change or no big inclination change needed. However, we will have to wait until we get around to the other side of the Earth again. We'll make an orbit so that we're absolutely in the just the right spot for the burn. That means going through the dark side and coming back out on the other side. And when the sun comes up, we'll use our RCS to settle our propellants, activate the engine again, and then start that burn. It's going to take us to the moon where we're planning on, for this trip, just doing a flyby. We'll come back, dock to the Ares station, and then the crew will finally be able to occupy the station and do any EVA construction that needs to be done. Later, some propellant will be brought up, some new tanks will load up the Mercury again, and then head off to the moon where they'll sit in orbit for a little while, doing some research. But that isn't going to be today. That'll be a much further uh, episode in the future. So, Project Gateway. 
As you know, I was remastering it because I wanted to, and because your choices were to get those when Ares was not ready, or get nothing at all. I received a lot of positive feedback for episode 1, but episode 2's views dropped off by 50%. So to those of you who think it's just the same thing as before and aren't watching it, it's not. It's a retrospective and there's new content. Almost all the interludes are being redone, so you might want to stick with it, but if it still doesn't seem to be liked, then I will cancel it. It's beautiful out here. Yeah, more beautiful than Kerbin. Let's do the EVA early. Yeah, I don't blame you. Alright, go ahead, get out there. Looking good. I'm gliding up to the open area. Look at that plant. Guys, it is great out here. Alright, listen up everyone. There's been an incident in the Atlantic. Direct your attention to the screens for a report. A decommissioned submarine from their Second World War has been stolen by a rogue group of humans. We believe they had intended to target ships trying to bring supplies to our launch facilities in South America. The Earth Union Navy was sent to stop them. They succeeded, this time, but you can see it was not without bloodshed. All facilities are going on high alert, so be careful when you're out there among the humans. All right, Kerbinauts, I wish I could give you more, but the project has been quite challenging to get an episode put together. It takes about an hour and a half per one minute of video. Maybe it'll get better, maybe it'll get worse, but if I keep making gateway remasters, at least you'll have those for weeks without an Aries. This is the next launch. It's heading up to the space station, but it doesn't go quite as planned. We'll see that later. Until next time, I will see you later, Kerbinauts. <laughs>